Hey, Gearbox TV fans, we're here again with another edition of Test Drive Tuesday. And uh, as part of our commitment to bring you the uh, the best and the most unusual, we're here with our friend James Bartlett and with his uh, Duesenberg Dual Cal Phaeton. And, uh, James, you were just telling me you never really expected to own a car like this. No, I think this is every car guy's dream. I wanted one since I was 13 years old, and it only took until I was this old to be able to do it. Just just took a little bit longer than you may have anticipated. But I really enjoyed owning the car. I can't tell you how many times I've taken it to shows and people have said, uh, read about them but never seen one. And they're so appreciative for, for the fact that I brought it out and showed it that it's really been the most rewarding thing about owning the car. Well, the neat thing about Duesenbergs is I guess they were kind of the, for lack of a better word, the supercar of their day. I mean, not necessarily in the connotation that we consider a supercar today, but in terms of there was nothing being manufactured that I'm aware of that could touch one of these things. No, one of these things actually set the land speed record for a 24-hour run back in 1935, and uh, it ran 135 miles an hour for 24 hours and 152 over the last hour when it didn't have to stop for tires or uh, driver change. And uh, that record stood until the 1950s. And they, they actually got these things up to 400 horsepower in the 1930s. And Detroit couldn't match that till late 50s, maybe 1960. So this is a, my understanding is this is a double overhead cam, four valve per cylinder straight eight, is that right? That's right, and they, uh, the Duesenberg brothers actually won the Indy 500 three times with their cars. And they took an Indianapolis engine and basically scaled it up and detuned it. You open the hood on one of these and it looks very much like their Indianapolis race engines. So this thing really is kind of a almost race engine specifications even today. I mean, hemi head, overhead, uh, overhead cams, four valve per cylinder. I mean, that's pretty cutting edge stuff even today. Well, this car will run about 300 horsepower and pushing 400 foot pounds of torque, which is not unlike a modern engine. Well, that's kind of what you need. I'm sure this thing isn't light. It's beautiful, but it doesn't look like it's a lightweight. It weighs 6,000 pounds even and it's almost perfectly matched 3,000 front and 3,000 back, again going back to their race car heritage. And that weight is despite the fact that a lot of components on the car are made out of aluminum, including the entire body, the firewall, uh, the rear axle housing. A lot of parts are made of aluminum, but I think they needed even more of it. So they call it a dual cowl phaeton because of uh, that piece right there that kind of folds down? Right. You've got a second metal cowling to protect passengers against the wind for the second windshield. Very nice. And uh, this is a Murphy body, and they only built four with the V windshield in the back. And they only built one on the long wheelbase chassis. Now, of course, as you know, this is a replica body, uh, but it duplicates that one long wheelbase V windshield Murphy. Well, that's absolutely gorgeous. And when you say it's a replica body, the only thing that really is a replica is the body. Everything else is all yeah, Duesenberg. It's real Duesenberg. Yeah. yeah that's what I and thought. it was all together from new. And I know the entire history of the car. Wow, what a work of art. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, James, here's the $64,000 question. Can we go drive this thing? Well, we can. I think I've got a quarter tank of gas that ought to get us about 20 miles. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, it should be a lot of fun. It's extremely heavy steering, and uh, first thing you need to do if you buy one is start lifting weights. Sounds phenomenal. And I guess first gear is just kind of for just uh, getting rolling and then when you get to second, that's where all the, the good stuff happens? Yes, you can really rev this thing up. They were certified by the factory to run 88 miles an hour in second gear and 118 in high. And I knew a guy that bought one in the 50s when they were just old used cars. And he said when he was young and crazy, he proved that they really would do it. Well, you know, and it doesn't feel like a 6,000 pound car. I mean, I don't know what it's like to steer it, but riding in it, it doesn't feel that incredibly heavy. It steers like a 6,000 pound car. And so it's a three-speed manual? It is. And is it all synchromesh like a more modern uh, transmission would be? It's a crash box. You have to uh, double clutch it to shift. So it's an art form. You don't just hop in this thing out of your Camaro and get in and think you're gonna drive it then. Right.